from the Federal University of Rio Grande and Sheffield Hallam University. Uh, who is the speaker? Hi, it's me. Hi. Uh, okay. Uh, you can share your presentation and, and, and start, please. You have uh, as maximum 20 minutes. Okay, uh, can you see my presentation? Yes. Okay, uh, so hello everybody. My name is Jaini. I am a master's student in computer and science at Federal University of Rio Grande do Norte. And I will present my and Marjorie work, which title is uh, Using Neural and Distance-Based Machine Learning Techniques in order to identify genuine and acted emotions from facial expressions. So uh, let's start talking about human communication. Communication is a process that involves the exchange of information between two or more interlocutors. When you think about human communication, we can divide it in two categories, verbal and nonverbal form. Nonverbal form includes posture types, which may indicate interest or disinterest in someone's conversation, for example. It can also express our readiness or not to listen to a subject. Um, for example, if you are trying to talk to someone and the person is constantly looking at some other place or at cell phone, this might indicate that the person is not interest in continuing any conversation on the subject for whatever reason. We also have the voice modulation, which is a resource that helps us to communicate better through varying the tone, emphasis on specific words, and changing the rate of speech. We can also express ourselves through gestures, such as uh, waving our hands while we speak or pointing to something or using our fingers to indicate an American mouth, or also the use of arbitrary and cultural related gestures. And finally, we have the facial expressions that are responsible for a huge proportion of nonverbal communication, like when we smile during a, a conversation or when we frown to express anger. So facial expression recognition is a fundamental characteristic of humans that helps in the communication process. And therefore it's critical to understand it better. There are many solutions in the literature for automatic identification of, the, of human emotions, but there are situations that emotions will not necessarily be genuine since emotions can be acted. For example, the fact that we are smiling does not necessarily mean that we are happy. We can also smile after uh, someone says something really embarrassing and we don't know how to properly react to that. So uh, there are many important reasons to differentiate when emotions are genuine or active, such as judging whether a person is lying or being honest. This can be used to assist in assessing in more authentic way the motivation and emotional experience of a person ac accused in, in a law court. Also to help psychologists in the lens of the patients, especially on patients with manipulative symptom disorders. And also can be used to improve human machine interface and exploring the authenticity of the user experience such as assisting to analyze the emotional response given by, by user by facial expressions. In this work, our objective was to investigate the features of facial expression that can be used to differentiate acted from genuine emotions. For this, we, we initially considered only happiness and sadness emotion. So uh, we used three data sets uh, the fake emotions were acquired from Interface 3D and Concanate databases, which are datasets that are widely used in literature. 
And the genuine emotions were acquired from a data set collected from another work where participants were provoked by music and image stimuli, which elicited fear, sadness, or happiness emotions. So we preprocessed the images of these data sets following these steps. First, we detect faces on images using the cascade classifier method from OpenCV library. Then we mark we marked facial landmark points using a pre-trained model from the lib library, which estimates the location of 68 coordinates that maps regions of the face, such as eyes, mouth, and so on. And finally, we calculate feature values mapping the distance between important facial points, uh, like measuring the openness of mouth, the openness of eye, the distance between the border of eyes, and so on. And after these steps, for each feature value, we calculated the difference obtained between expressive and neutral face. Then we generated a new database containing these different, these different values, the expressive emotion, sadness or happiness, and a Boolean field representing the emotion type, active or genuine, which will be used as our class representation. Three algorithms were implemented to analyze the data. We used k-means in order to analyze the data set. The key nearest neighbors and backpropagation neural network were used to classify. We implemented k-means, initially considering points with 14 dimensions. Uh, we explained it, uh, as explained previous, previously, each dimension represents the difference between features of neutral and expressive face. We define clusters as being the type of emotion acted or genuine. Thus, we, we define two clusters and implemented two versions of this algorithm, one using, using Euclidean distance and another using Manhattan distance. So in this table, we presented the results of the implementation of the k-means with the two distances and the bare results were found using the Manhattan distance. Also, uh, we analyzed the feature values used with the k-means and verified that some features have a very detailed description about the face detected. So we disregarded three of these features and obtained the results presented in this table. As you can see, we have a bare result in comparison with the previous, day, especially for sadness emotion. This table also compares the results between k-means and k-n-n. For the k-n-n, we also used the Manhattan distance and this new feature set. And as, as expected, the comparative analysis between k-means and k-n-n algorithms showed a better result with k-n-n for classification with 98% of precision for happiness emotion and 90% for, for sadness emotion. And finally, our backpropagation neural network was implemented with 14 neurons on the input layer and one neuron on output layer. The output layer indicates genuine or active emotion, zero or one respectively. So we varied the neurons on the ID layer with three to six neurons and the hyperparameters used were chosen through experimentation. The results with the best configurations were presented in this table that show good results for both emotions analyzed. Um, as you can see, we obtained a better result with neural network for sadness emotion in comparison with KNN with 92% of precision and 82% of recall. So uh, we obtained good results with, on classifying the happiness and sadness emotion as fake or genuine, similar to the presented in the literature. The best classifier for happiness emotion was the key nearest neighbors and the best classifier for sadness emotion was the neural network. 
Uh, in, in addition, most papers published in, fa in the facial recognition area use fake emotions performed by actors. But we have shown that using acted emotions data sets to classify real emotions does not necessarily reflect a real scenario, even with good results. Uh, thus, a data set with elicited emotions can create a better mapping of the user features. As feature works, some modifications on image processing will be made, such as analyzing the feature values considered, which can also be done with features extraction based on intensity of muscle contractions, for example. And also, the neural network can be improved the quantity of data set used can be increased and we can extend this analysis with other emotions. Thank you and feel free to ask me any question. Okay, uh, thank you, Jane. Uh, any question? We have one question. Um, it says in the chat, in order of in order to improve your results, have you considered try with that argumentation to mix? It could be useful. Sorry, I I don't understand. There is a in the in the chat. It says in order to, to improve your result, are you consider it uh, try with data augmentation techniques? Can I can I try? To, sorry, do you want to go go ahead, Jane? Sorry. Uh, no, you you can answer, please. <laughs> Sure, Robert, we didn't have that information in the data set. So the data set was all collected and then we, uh, we just used it. So we didn't have extra information that we could potentially add to as, as a metadata, for instance. But yeah, that would be something very useful. We might, you know, plan, because Jan just started, this work was done while, while she was an undergraduate student and now she's a, a master's student, an MPU student, so we might consider, you know, collecting a, a new data set and then we might include extra information. But thank you for the, for the uh, Okay, thank you, Marjorie. Any other question? Okay, uh, thank you, Jane, for your uh, good presentation.